As Ekla has already introduced myself, uh, it's not hardly necessary to repeat, but for those that haven't seen me before until recently, I was, as Ekla said, working at the CPSS Secretariat, but now I'm here more in my individual capacity, knowing a bit of the history and background to how this came about. And I wanted to explain a bit about the generalities of why we want to deal with the shoreline and why we want to talk about cross-sectoral cooperation. Um, and uh, you're going to have to apologize my voice. I hope you can hear and, and understand what I'm saying. But of course, I caught a horrible cold as, as I was on the way here. But the logic, I think, uh, of the panel here, we've uh, had the opportunity today to discuss a bit uh, how we would go about this. So the logic will flow from the more general to the more specific. So I'll start from the more, more general uh, background, and then we will move down the table and, and then end with Tony, who's going to be very practical, and then hopefully we'll have a bit of a discussion afterwards on, on how to work together. So my topic, why, why cross-sectoral, why shoreline? Um, to give you a bit of a background, when, uh, when we started working with Priority Area Secure, it wasn't Priority Area Secure, it was Priority Area 14 uh, in the old action plan to the EU Baltic Sea Region strategy. And uh, there was a long, long process of, uh, of review, uh, one and a half years, I think, that ended in February 2013 with a new adopted action plan. And it was during that, the review of this action plan that, that so, many, so many concrete ideas and, and cooperation aspects came up because the review process, though a bit protracted and a bit painful at times, I think it forced everyone to look very critically at their priority area and it forced also uh, the different countries around the Baltic Sea to look at uh, what they wanted to prioritize in terms of cooperation in the region. And uh, that is how we, how we uh, came to discuss the, the, the shoreline. Because um, during this process, we, asked, we basically asked stakeholders around the region, uh, what, what, what are your general concerns when it, comes to, uh, when it comes to civil protection and civil security? And from the text that was then on the table, we got a response back from the Helsinki Commission, from HELCOM, um, that was uh, more of a general comment saying that, well, we do have uh, quite a number of activities that deal with the shoreline. How is it with your priority area, the, prior, the PA secure? Does it deal with the shoreline or do you stop at, at some other border? What, what, what exactly are your aims and plans? So we did a bit of uh, running around the region and asked the different civil protection agencies, because those are the stakeholders in PA Secure. And we got back very different responses. We got different from each country. We got back from Lithuania. Well, it's not a problem. I mean, we just deal with the shore just as we do with anywhere else. Then we got from Estonia a very, very detailed answer about how up to five tons in the harbor there is a port act and how up to 10, to 10 tons there is a border and police that is supposed to be uh, involved and so on and so forth. So we thought, okay, well, if we don't even know who has the competencies that we need to look for in each, in each case, then definitely this should be part of what we do. So we deliberately introduced wording into PA Secure that would, that would open up the possibility to actually discuss how to cooperate uh, on the shoreline. And uh, during the review process as well, we had the opportunity also to discuss with the high-level group in the EU uh, basically, all the, all the national authorities, when they were finalizing the action plan, they had the opportunity to give us input as well. And it was very clear from them as well that, that this is exactly the sort of example that, that they would like to hear about, that uh, there, is something, uh, there is something new coming out of the cooperation around the EU Baltic Sea uh, strategy and action plan. And it should not be, as I think probably I come to in the next slide, if you don't mind giving me the next slide, then uh, there are the practical reasons of, the, of, the, um, of all the different countries around the, around the Baltic Sea that have different competencies when it comes to the shoreline. And then there is, um, uh, then there is also the, the, different, uh, the different legal reasons because uh, you know we have a, have a treaty on the functioning of the European Union and there is an article in there that's called the Solidarity Clause and that, that one uh, particularly stipulates that member states in the European Union should help one another in the case of man-made and, and, uh, and natural disaster. So there is a basis there as well, and all of this came out of the, out of the different discussions that we, that we already have, and that this really represents a, a potential tool for connecting across sectoral and, and, uh, and institutional boundaries. So we have 
really uh, already quite a, quite a, we had a lot of momentum of, of moving into this direction. And then we also had the practical background of having one flagship project running already at this time under PA14 and then PA Secure, we had flagship project 14.3, which was already working together um, with, different, uh, with different elements and across different boundaries because there we had international borders that were crossed because we had uh, civil protection agencies from all the different countries, but also the horizontal borders because there are so many layers of where you're working. We had uh, the civil protection authorities from the municipal level up to the regional level, up to the national level. So there are so many, many different borders that you need to think about. There are the horizontal ones, there are the vertical ones in between institutions, and then there are the ge geographical ones. And what, we, what usually is talked about in the civil protection most prevalently is the administrative borders. There is so all these borders to somehow connect across. And if we go to the, to the next one, then the, the, the answer to the why shoreline and the why cross sectoral is really because we need to because we have all of these people working. And in a reality where we have a EU Baltic Sea region strategy that calls for no new legislation, no new funding, no new, um, no, no, no new institutions, and while at the same time having 17 priority uh, areas and five horizontal actions, then you need to just find a way how to actually deliver for a maximum impact. And the way is exactly this, to cr talk across the institutions and to talk across the sectors. Because you can, I think we can all agree that we are, have to work with the reality that we, that we are in. And the way to actually try to get something bigger and better out of that is really, is really by this way of working. But I would, because we only have a few minutes uh, each before we go into more general discussion, I, I would actually say that this, all of this is quite self-evident. It's not why we should do it, it's how we should do it. And that to me, I think, is a, is a much bigger question that I think we can hopefully uh, discuss a bit here today and, and, and continue to explore and I know that the subsequent speakers are going to be more practical so they hopefully have more of a suggestion on, on how to do that. And then because it's always nice to finish with a couple of pictures and Tony actually suggested that I finish with some pictures. There's no, there's no lack of events where we have to cooperate and I mean this is just two very recent examples from Iceland. All the fish, that, all the dead fish that you see here, this is a, this is a fjord in Iceland. Uh, where we had, I think, in December 2012, we had 30,000 tons of herring just floating up into the fjord. They just hit a pocket where there was no oxygen, and then, you know, you have this in the, on the shore there, and then you have to think, well, how, how do you deal with that? You need the environment authorities, you need the health authorities, you need basically everyone involved to deal with that. And then we, we had a second incident in the same fjord in February, just four months later. And it's not unheard of. I think it happened also in 1943, but that was in 1943, and now it happens again. People have forgotten in the meantime, but we still need to have the tools at our disposal to somehow work together. And then, uh, then an even more recent example is uh, we had uh, there was a freight ship that stranded just outside of uh, Vesma, the Vestman Islands uh, in Iceland just yeah a couple of weeks ago, and as you can see, it caught fire. And because the engines were dead, it ended up drifting. And you know, when it drifts, it's just it 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 goes it goes like this. The most experienced seamen cannot really find their footing. And uh, yeah, another classic example of where you need really integrated efforts to to really try to get something. I think all the, all the types of responders that you could have are employed in in an incident like that. So it's it's just uh, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a practical. The practicalities, the practicalities are, are, are not the why, but the how.